it's What If Wednesday time with Susan Bennett Fisher and Martin Fisher, the co-founders of Body of Nine. So what if you understood the evolutionary value of Body of Nine? What would your life be like if you understood how to use your body to evolve? It's a big statement that we've made that Body of Nine helps you cultivate your evolutionary advantage. But our research for the past 10 years has really shown that this is more than just another assessment tool. This is really a way to improve your life, to help you be happier, to improve your relationships. And we have a plethora of testimonials from people that sometime, sometimes within months, often within years, suddenly look back and realize how much in such a great way their life has changed after having their natural number activated, identified, and learning what it is to have that particular superpower, how to actually evolve as a human being. Because it's so much more than just finding out about yourself. That's the first step in this progression of evolutionary change that starts to happen for you. Yeah, and by finding about yourself, we don't mean, okay, yes, I've got blue eyes, or yes, I'm five foot ten. I know that. It's about being honored for who you are, being able to like who you are, be able to recognize the things that you know and like about yourself that other people seem to think are really sometimes strange. So what we're going to talk about today is some of the evolutionary impacts of finding out your natural number and learning about other people and learning to activate the other eight natural numbers in your body. Because what it's like is, is it's as if if somebody said to you, okay, here are eight ways that you could expand your perceptive abilities and they're as yet unexperienced, so you don't know what we're talking about. And that's where we start with. You, you have no idea what we're talking about. And so we've often started to look at the analogy of being without sight and realizing that you can turn on that sight. Now, that actually isn't completely accurate. Really, no, because what it is, is like if we, if you knew you could see, but you walk around with your eyes closed anyway... It's more like that. It's like more like choosing to close your eyes after you found out about it. So, well, yeah, you know, that was nice, Susan, very much. Thank you very much. But I'm going to keep my eyes closed. It's even more fundamental than that. Because if you are the only person without sight, then there's an element of, well, why don't I have sight the rest of the world else? But we're actually in a state before that. We're in a place where nobody has sight. And we're offering you the chance to be one of the first few people that can get these extra sensory inputs and then help the rest of the world understand that they are without sight and they can learn how to see. So this is not a question of one person not having sight and rejecting having that sight. This is a question of one person knowing that they could have sight and nobody else even knows that that's possible. Right, because and, and out there, I mean, we're trying to think of, of analogies. Another analogy might be like nobody could read and write. Before we could read and write, you or even before we could speak. Yeah, you didn't know what you were missing. And we had language. We didn't know, before we had language, what would that be like? Language enabled a level of communication between people that uh, brought people together. And the printing press, another great example. Before the printing press, there was no easy way to disseminate information that other people could read. Yes, but your printing press is not your body, right? So this is actually so body-based. Mm -hmm. Your body is capable of far more than you think that it is. So over the course of our lives, we have moments where everything is working. Uh, you know, it, there's, a, there's books written about being in the zone. Uh, being in the zone, it, I believe, is one of those moments when you figure it out how to turn on your natural number or another aspect of your being that you didn't know that you could activate. And then there's those other moments where something happens that is so unusual for you that you're like, what was that? You don't even know what kind of flitted by in your, your life experience. So let's take a momentary pause and let's address potentially one of the elephants in the room. Martin and Susan have made this, um, out, this claim, which to many might sound large, it may sound even outrageous. One of the first steps of knowing that it is possible to evolve is to not disbelieve all the things we've been told about how it's not possible. <laughs> if you're in a room with 100 people and nobody can see and you say, hey, I actually think I have a better way of seeing. 
Most other people are saying, no, no, you can't possibly that's do that. That's not possible. You don't want to yeah, do that. Yeah, that's not scientifically provable. No, let's stay in the <laughs> little place we're in and not try. Let's not open the door and go outside and see what's outside. So at the very least, we ask don't disbelieve and don't let the idea that there is an evolutionary possibility for humanity. That we have not yet explored. Yeah, don't let that idea dissuade you because, honestly, there are many people that will say, no, you're not ready for that. And there's other people say, well, why would I? And what does it matter? And what does it matter? But there's going to be a few people. And we're talking to you guys. And the question is, do you want to join us? Do you really want to be part of what could change humanity? It's a big claim. It's we a big that. claim. Yeah. Because this, this isn't, you know, one of the, the struggles we have in talking about it is all the words that we use are used so many other ways by so many other people to describe so many other things that the impact of, of the power the power of the impact of this work gets completely lost. Oh, yes, you're happier. You can be happier and better relationships. Well, every system out there promises that. But what we promise that no other system out there promises is if you actually dig into this work, if you dig into the capability in your own body available to you right now through simple physical exercises that we can teach you, your life will, you will evolve. You and, will change. And even if you're saying, I don't need to evolve. I don't need to change. Why should I worry about changing all of humanity? Well, you don't have to worry about changing humanity because humanity changes one person at a time. And you are one of those one people. So this work is for people that are innovative and brave and interested in growing and all those kinds of things. And we really encourage you, if you're going to do this work, that you get yourself to baseline. It's not trauma recovery work, really. No. And it's not work that can help you. There's so many better systems out there for understanding the trauma you've experienced and recovering who you are. This is very, very powerful work for knowing who you are in this moment. So your natural number and that that can be done as part of your trauma work. But the the activity of learning to develop the access to the other eight natural numbers is very helpful if you've done your baseline work. Yeah, natural numbers and the exercise we go through, what we teach you, comes from a place of centeredness, if you will. This is not a way to be able to heal past trauma. It is certainly an extra tool that makes some of those things more effective. And one of the awesome things about this time of humanity is that there are so many more tools. There are so many people doing amazing work to help people recover from trauma. But, you know, I, the thing that I always go back to is any one method has been developed by a person of one of the natural numbers who doesn't know that that's their natural number. And it works for them and maybe eight out of nine people. So it gives you context for understanding all of those other healing modalities, which is why it's important as part of any trauma healing recovery process. Right. But I would say things like CBT, EMDR, any of those things are pretty widespread in their, their applicability. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Very much so because they're behaviorally centric. Yes. And yes, our behaviors are seated on top of our natural numbers. But behaviors are very heavily influenced by life experience and belief systems. Your behavior is less predictable based off your natural number than the gifts and skills that create those behaviors. So it's, it underlies behavior, but it is not the determinant of your behavior as much as your life experiences and your belief systems are much, much bigger determinants of your behavior. So the whole natural number process, the whole body of nine system, if you will, is about not only helping you understand your body and your connection to your body better, but also understanding your spirituality, understanding how your spirituality works, how you process, what you care about, and honoring you for who you are and what is your nature, rather than your nurture. Right. And, and what it does, is it fuses the body, mind, soul connection back together. You know, we spend all of our time out in the Western world for whatever reason, trying to separate those things. Oh, my spiritual nature is different than my physical nature. Well, no, it isn't. But because we experience this so differently, depending on our natural number, it has a huge impact. And especially if you compare the, you know, the even numbers, the body-based natural numbers with the odd numbers, the more unbody, unembodied natural numbers. With, uh, they have a tendency, the odd numbers have a tendency to approach life from a more... Um, Almost intellectual viewpoint. 
it, it can go intellectual, it can go spiritual. It's yeah. kind of the range. Mm-hmm. So they, they go between mind and spirit and body pe- body based people go between body and mind. With and a, with a dash of emotion put on the side. Well, yeah, emotion is another set of, of information and indicators. Mm-hmm. And emotion is best understood in the context of your experiences and your, uh, it's, it's information. Mm-hmm. Emotions are information and need to be considered as part of and felt through the body, right? Mm-hmm. And there's also your superpower. What is it that you can do that other people can't do of different natural numbers? And it's actually a vital part of who you are is the magic that comes with being you, whether it's the ability to do Reiki, whether it's the ability to read people, whether it's the ability to move energy. And it's the way your natural number influences the way in which you do those things. Because, you know, I can do Reiki and you can do Reiki, but the way we do it, is quite different. And you can move energy way better than I can move energy because that's part of your signal. Sickness. Well, well, just even understanding what it means to move energy. Most people, most people, if you're not a six or haven't had experience of what it feels like to be a six, the concept of moving energy, changing energy, transforming it, rearranging it, most people have no idea that they can do that. But seven out of nine of our audience is sitting here going, what the heck are they talking about? What do you mean move energy? What do you mean by feeling people's... Reiki systems and the rest of those things. And that is the point. There is so much out there that is real, that is dismissed as not being real because eight out of nine people can't do it. Can't do it. Don't yeah. experience it. Don't even acknowledge its existence. Right. It's not even part of their reality. But it is true. It is part of humanity's ability. Every one of us has one of nine particular types of superpower. Each of us individually, I suspect, has worked with and can stumble into, into it, but can <laughs> actually do parts of that, not all of it. I'm sure there's fives out there that can do things that I have no idea how to do, and there's things that I can do that other fives have no idea how to do. There is a individual, we each have an individual role to play. That no matter how many fives are there, how many sixes, how many of us each are, there are millions of billions of people on the planet, and each of us has a particular role in the planet. But what you have is a specific gift. Yes. And the degree to which you develop your ability to use that gift consciously is the evolutionary part of this because you have a gift but you have nine centers in your body so have you have your natural numbers movement center and set of muscles and bones and fascia but you have the other eight it's not like you're missing them but what you're missing is the conscious understanding of how to activate them in the body how to interpret the information that comes in through that region that sensor and what to do with it so you, those things, we are naturally equipped with our own natural number and the other ones we can learn, but they're never going to be as good and as developed, at least in this incarnation of who we are. I mean, if people learn to develop these, these aspects of their being from birth, now there's true evolution, I expect. Yes. And the ability to raise children, knowing this about themselves from the very beginning, from as soon as they can start to understand who they are, helping them move based around their natural numbers location, helping them be honored and helping them understand how different other people are from them based on their natural number. Other people are not wrong. They're They're just just different. different. And so there's a phrase that you might have heard that it's really hard to love other people if you don't love yourself. It is equally as hard to understand other people if you don't understand about yourself. It's difficult to honor other people if you don't honor yourself. And as it turns out, most people that you hang out with are not like you. And any sort of, well, they're like me, so if they're doing this, it means X, because if I did it, it means X, is going to cause a problem in communication straight off the bat. This can all be avoided. That's part of our frustration in some ways, is that a lot of the misunderstandings that happen out there can be avoided. Right. You can, you can turn that thing about the other person that irritates you into a gem that you can receive. Because there's always wisdom in anything that anybody is offering you. There's, a, there's, there's wisdom for you. And this ability to open yourself so that all your senses are receiving that wisdom and that gift enables you to take in more information, understand more things that are happening around you, perceive more of what's going on, and start to garner and appreciate the gifts of other people as well as your own. Because if you consider yourself just you, in a physical sense or spiritual sense or 
intellectual sense, rather than your physio-spiritual reality. You are a physio-spiritual being. It is who you are. And any interaction you have with other people happens on so many levels. And most of the time, all we hear is the words. Or sometimes we see the physical movement. Sometimes we feel the energy. But if you can have curiosity and caring, then you can have better communication. And people say, well, you know, I'm so busy. I'm really liking my system now, and I don't want to talk to you about your system. Your system, you know, this is not book learning. This is not a so, something that you actually have to um, think about. You don't think about learning this. You actually learn it with your body. And it is... It's not necessarily easy to learn, no, it's a but it's like, not studying. It's, it's, it's I, I, and also to, to not learn it means you're going to short everybody in you, your life. In your life. Yeah. You're not going to give them the fullness of you or receive the fullness of it's them. It's not just you that suffers. Actually, right. Everybody it's everybody around you. It's like, well, I'm a good enough coach just the way I am. Yeah, no, you're not. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> so help us out here. We are really passionate, as you can tell, about this. And yet, we don't want to make people long for not being interested in what we do. We don't want to make people wrong for not wanting to improve their lives and to improve the world around them. But it's a tough place to be because everybody is in their own place. Everybody has their own drivers. And... The question comes back again and again. If you could relatively easily take off the training wheels so that you're no longer struggling to get through life, struggling to understand what you're doing, not right. growing, and are happy that you've reached your pinnacle, well, I've got bad news for you. Even us, <laughs> we've not reached our pinnacle. We're, We're not even close. No We're way. at the very basis of this. Yes. But it's very hard to get past the point we're at without community. Right, we can't do this alone. We've kind of reached the point in our own personal development that we could reach as of this point. Right. There's more to come. And as we grow, as we work with other people, we're continuously learning, continuously growing. And we want to keep continuously learning, continuously growing. But yeah, because every single like tremendously impactful evolutionary experience I've had with this work. Uh, an example, once I was doing the seven posture with a seven. And for the first time in my entire life, I experienced what it meant, what it felt like not to actually be in my body and experience life through my body. And it was, it just blew me away. And those kinds of experiences are available for all of them. And they're different for you depending on whether you're more based in your body or more uh, uh, not based in your body in terms of which is more blowing you away. We, had a, we were working with a seven the other day and we had her activating her eight, pushing herself into the, the wall and pushing down into the floor. And, and she felt her body for the first time. So the opposite thing happened for her that happened for me. And it's that level of evolutionary experience. Your body is capable of sensing and experiencing and your extra body, your spiritual body is, is capable of accessing information and uh, a myriad of amazing sensations and ways of being that you haven't even begun to explore. Another analogy, we love analogies. You are an amazing teacher. You're full of wisdom. Absolutely acknowledging that you're an amazing human being. You're out there to help other human beings. But if you only speak English, how are you going to reach the people that don't speak English? If you only speak one language, how is your wisdom going to get heard by the people that don't speak your language? And that's where you're at. Even if you're completely trilingual, multilingual. You're still going to have somebody else speaking some other language. out of nine people can't hear you. I know that sounds ridiculous. Even if they speak English. <laughs> Even if they speak English. So <laughs> if you know in your body, how to activate all nine. Whether or not you do it consciously, everybody can hear you better of the other eight. Even the people of that particular number, of your number, can hear you better if your body knows how to speak the other eight natural numbers. And, and, and understanding your impact, today I was sitting in the hot tub with my daughters, and as a six, there's a certain space I get in that is just so much fun for me, but it pisses my daughters off tremendously. 
And, and it's this place where I'm kind of playing with the energy and I'm making fun of them and I'm having the best time. And they're sitting there staring at me as if I am the worst person on the face of the earth. But I am just so happy because it's just so funny for me. But then I realized, well, you know, if I'm doing this, even though I'm having a really good time, they're not. You know, and just understanding your impact. You know, and, and it's really okay for me to be the six and to, to, to be in that space of humor and, 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 and enjoyment of life. And it's one of the te- things I can teach people. But I had to find a way to have my daughters hear that so that they didn't say, oh, there's my mom making fun of me. She's such a bully. You know, my mother does this and does that. And, and, and yeah, I do all those things. But I have another op- opportunity here to be with them if I remember with my two to look her in the eye when I'm actually doing that, because then I can see the impact I'm having. If I remember with my seven that she's vulnerable and sweet, and she may laugh along with me, but it's probably not the best thing I could do in the moment. So, so so much learning to be had when you expand your awareness. And it all comes back to the ability to learn about your impact, ability to learn from and with other people. And that's part of the fun things in life. It's certainly the funniest thing I've done since moving away from computers is to be able to learn with other people. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah, you have to have other people around. You know, and nothing, you know, when Martin and I sit at home and nobody comes over and nothing happens, we don't usually get our big insights unless we interact with each other, of course. We get a lot of insights from the, the combination of our five and sixes coming together. And honestly, we get our insights from whatever support the universe gives us. Some of our biggest insights have come from... Messages in the middle of the night. Messages in the middle of the night. And so the other part of this, it comes to me right now, is that if there's more to life than just what we have here, and if there's a way to hear and connect to that, this is part of that process. Right. The evolutionary ladder is a ladder. It's not a step. Maybe it's a marathon, but it's certainly a ladder. And you have to go up the steps. You can't go from step one to step four, we think. But you can certainly go from step well, sometimes one you to, can. Two, to three to four. Yeah, I don't think missing the steps. I, the, yeah, you know. because there's something to be learned at each step. There's something to be understood. And, and I, I think that it, it's also because the ladder doesn't necessarily go straight, mm-hmm. right? It goes straight for a while, and then it turns. And then it goes up, and then it goes up. So because the ladder is always moving around... You, don't, you can't predictably follow any sort of linear path through this experience. Learning is not linear. No, there's no educator in the world that's going to tell you that learning is a completely linear experience. At least not in any learning experience I've ever had. There's always steps forward, steps back. You change, you grow. You step forward, you go back, you solidify, you move forward. That is definitely the model that we've seen here. And there's also the, there are these like, Bursts. Burst, yes. You know, there's bursts. It's like you do all of these things, and all of a sudden there's a burst in another direction, and that's when those evolutionary leaps happen. And part of our job here is to help you be prepared for those leaps. We're not going to make those leaps for you. No, we can't. not our job. Yeah. But to understand how do you initiate the energetic changes, the body-based changes that you need to work on, how do you build the muscles, bones, and fascia necessary for each of the activations, because you're not even used to using that part of the body that's not yours. You, you, you overuse your natural number and underuse the other eight. Part of the fun things that we do when we're not spending time enjoying talking to you guys by video is we work with a number of different people that are very, very body focused and are body workers, body trainers. And they, even though they're aware of bodies pretty well, they need a bit of a nudge to get the awareness that you know, they can actually use other parts of their body to help other people's other parts of their body. And this is why we like to work with holistic practitioners and coaches because they care about making the world a better place, as do we, you know, um, having a positive impact, uh, being open and willing to change, and also being aware, learning, constantly learning. So uh, this understanding of the nine can be added to anything that you do, literally and anything. Honestly, should be. And, yeah, th- yes. And it makes whatever it is you do do, you do it better more thoroughly and more evolutionarily for you and for the people you're working with. And I apologize for the use of should, but in this particular case, I'm (laughs) going to stand by it. Well, it is a choice, just like anything is a choice. 
And we really recommend this choice. We stand by it 100%. We have our body of nine guarantee that you'll be happier in six months if you do start to move down this path, that you'll live a more fulfilled and on purposeful life. All these things happen. And whatever you do, you're going to do better as a result of knowing this. You can't help but do better once you understand your natural number. There is something, and the other eight. And, your, and the other eight as well. The more you learn, the better it gets. Well, in some ways, I don't even know that you can truly understand and differentiate what is your natural number without understanding and differentiating the other eight yes, as well. I agree completely. And the longest journey starts with the smallest step. And the smallest step is finding out what your natural number is. That is step one. Hearing what a thousand people like you have said about what, how wonderful it is to be that natural number and to start the process. And it's a very internal process and it's a very automatic process. There's very little you have to do once you've been identified. It once, starts. Once you understand and you can feel that connection between and around your physio-spiritual being, it's going to start. And the more you focus on it, the faster it happens, the more strongly it happens. The more you learn about it and you start to look at, okay, what was my natural number and what was my learned behavior? What are my belief systems? It lets you start to take that apart so that you end up at choice. And that is what is so powerful, is being a choice about what you're perceiving, how you're taking it in, and what you're doing with it. And then as you learn about the other eight, you can start to say, well, how does my wisdom apply to the people that don't share the same natural number that I do? Because it's obvious to people that share your natural number what your wisdom is. Right. Going back to the example with my daughters, it's like, as a six, if, if there was another six there, my sister's, uh, my daughter's boyfriend is a six, and when he's around, we just laugh together. We have a really great time, and we understand each other, and we don't have to, we don't judge each other for the kind of crazy behavior that we sometimes get into. Whereas my daughters always do. They don't get it. They don't understand. They, they're, they're used to me because I've been their mother since they were born, and they put up with me, and they love me, and all those kinds of things. But this is part of the like understanding and not judging other people for like what's the gift in what in mom's way of being. Yeah, and the rules of engagement change by natural number. Each natural number has a different set of the rules of engagement. None of them are necessarily right. There are certain conventions that societies put together that may or may not be appropriate, but they certainly are not put together by all natural numbers all at the same time. That is for sure. And there's a um, a. There are some natural numbers that care about them less mm -hmm. and some that care about them more. So most of the rules of engagement actually come from the ones that care about them. Yes. And then the rest of us um, who don't care about them so much get ourselves in trouble all the time because we don't espouse to those rules of engagement. And we get ourselves, we, we piss off the ones that do. <laughs> so you can understand, you know, both at a micro level in your communications one-on-one -on -one with people, you can understand at a societal or community level what's going on, you can start to take it apart and say, well, what parts of this do I care about? What worked for me? And again, it always to me comes back to, you get a choice. You get a choice. And you get a choice not to judge others. You get a choice not to judge yourself. And I wanna circle back around to the self-love piece. It wasn't until I found out my natural number, number that I began to understand what it meant to love myself. And interestingly, loving yourself seems to have a component of opening yourself to universal joy, to God, to whatever your words are for that spiritual place. Even if it's just nature, even if you're not particularly connected to the idea of a thing, a spirit, whatever that is. But there seems to be joy in love. There is joy in love. Joy in love that we can open our bodies to receive. And the antithesis of that is that there is sadness when that doesn't exist. Yeah. Or when we don't feel it. And when we don't feel it. We get sad. Yeah. Yeah. And so we always sound pretty positive when we do these videos because that's one of the reasons we do these videos. We're not necessarily Pollyannas. We're not full of the joy of always around. There is good in the world. There is not good in the world. But I think the proportion There's life and good, death and there's, you know, I mean... The proportion of good has gone up since I've worked with body. Now. Yes, I would say that's true for me too, by a huge margin, because when I first started this work, there was pretty much no good in my life. Right. So there's a hundred thousand million reasons why understanding and finding out about your natural number is good for you. 
There might be some reasons why it's not, but we haven't figured out any yet. Well, I just want to take this even that bigger step, Martin. It's not about this being good for you. This is evolutionary, a.k.a. you can grow and change in a way that you didn't yet know possible that will be a huge advantage and a huge positive impact of your, on your life. Yeah. That's really it. So you can hear us gently saying, yeah, you think it's good, but you can hear us be more direct and saying, this is life changing. It's life affirming. And honestly, it will change the world. The more people that understand their natural number, the faster the world will change. It will take hundreds of years, probably, to get to a place where everyone knows their natural number, where as soon as a child is born, they can go to school and say, I'm a natural number, whatever it is, and their teachers understand and honor them. It's a long way from there. But we would like to get there. And what our superpowers could turn into. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the evolutionary excitement for yes. me is like, well, as a six, my ability to feel and rearrange energy is very wonderful. I can change the outcome of things if I'm focused at them. And so what if, right? What if Wednesday, what if spiritual surgery is a thing? What if the few people that say they can do it actually can do it? What if it is possible to heal by touch and there's a lot of examples of it out there. Yes, but I'm sure scientifically you can't prove it. But there's those of us that have done it that know it's true. What if everything like that is true? What if we all the are things we choose to spiritual, disbelieve? Magical human beings that have been repressed. This again is part, I believe, of our legacy as human beings. And we can get there. So yeah, we're taking off the gloves here going for the big the big win and wanting you to join us on this journey because we literally cannot do it without you. Yeah. Choose love. And we'll talk to you next week. Don't disbelieve. And yes, we'll talk to you next week. With love from both of us. Bye-bye.